Say it with me, folks, and louder for the people in the back. Making good art is never an excuse for being a bad person. Being a difficult-to-work-with, ego-driven, artistic visionary is actually a fairly alluring goal to a lot of people. But is it necessarily a good goal to have? On screen is the last few additions to the Super Nice Bros illustration I've been working on this past month. It is a print, and you can get the print in the first link in the description below. It's the first physical product I've put out in a while, so it's a good way to support the channel if you'd like. Now, if you want to get this print on sale, at a discount, or even for free, stick around till the end of the video. People that have found success while being egomaniacs are oftentimes idolized. I am a big, strong, beautiful, pale boy who don't need no interpersonal relationship skills. Yikes. And a lot of the lore that we build up around being an artist, at least stereotypically, is being avant-garde, uh, unhinged, and sporadic. These are all elements that we tend to conflate with creativity, because creativity can oftentimes feel spontaneous, inconsistent, or even enthralling. To be honest though, the reason why these things are popularized isn't so much because it's the best way to be, a best practice, or even like a path of least resistance. It's really because it's easy. Like, too easy. Like, make $60,000 a month from the comfort of your own home, kind of easy. Are there a few people that are actually doing that? Yeah. But is this particular offer too good to be true? Likely yes. But why make a video on this subject? Isn't it pretty obvious that you should be a nice person? And at least reductive to say that? Aren't there some exceptions to the rule? If you're hoping to make it as an artist, whether it's by building up an audience or getting creative work, I'm here to tell you what you probably already know, which is that being nice is severely underrated. That is to say, building up your communication skills can be just as important as building up your art skills. The reason why this may be a good reminder for a lot of us is as artists or creative people, we may have a tendency to be neurodivergent or the opposite of neurotypical, socially awkward, we might feel like outcasts that we don't fit into the crowd, or oftentimes even misunderstood. Sometimes, maybe a little bit justified, but more so egotistically, we might feel like our work deserves more respect or recognition than it's getting. This is where it's really valuable to conduct yourself as a professional. A professional takes accountability for their actions and their work, is respectful to others, and communicates clearly. Say you're taking commissions or working with a client. Now, aside from doing great work, they're going to notice if you respond in a timely manner, let them know if there's a problem or a delay, if you're respectful of their ideas, and just, in general, interact in a friendly manner. When you do that, more often than not, those will actually end up being return clients. Now, what about with an audience? Well, you may have noticed, for example, under my videos, there are a lot of hearts next to comments. Maybe that annoys you, but the reason that I do that is because I genuinely enjoy being able to interact with folks who comment when I can. And at the moment, I'm typically able to respond or reply, unless a comment is rude or creepy or is asking a super long-winded or vague question, you know, that kind of thing. I bring this up, though, because there was actually a time back when I was making a regularly updating webcomic online. I was about 17 or so, and I had about four or five people who would regularly, loyally comment under my comics. And I had the audacity to have the attitude of remember to be cool, which is really just standoffish, right? Don't be too accessible to these folks, which is just ridiculous, right? The fact that someone was giving attention to my dinky little comic was something I should have been grateful for, especially at that stage of my artistic growth and stuff. So I think that was just a matter of needing to gain some humility. One more quick past experience of mine. One of the first uh, creative jobs that I got doing creative work, I personally feel like I wasn't necessarily skilled uh, or overly skilled for the job. Um, more so, I got the job because I was a culture fit. So in other words, they felt like I was, I had good chemistry or I fit in well with the other folks there in the office. And it wasn't so much just about the quality of work that I made. So it can go a long way. Now, all of this is absolutely not to say you should be fake. I would almost rather you were rude than fake. But if upon introspection, you find yourself being angry, abrupt, standoffish, uh, overly frustrated or arrogant, 
it may be worth your time to find the root of those problems and try to work them out in yourself. Creative work is not easy. There is a fine line to walk and a lot of things to balance. A lot of times we'll find ourselves mentally or even emotionally taxed by our work, but it's not an excuse to be a butt. On the other hand, people are going to be more willing to help you, to provide you with work, or to like your work if you are kind, cooperative, humble, and respectful. The examples that people put up on a pedestal of people who were successes but also very egotistical are kind of like conquerors or competitors who ended up winning. It's really kind of isolationist. What may seem less exciting, but actually works out to be more successful for a larger amount of people is actually lowering yourself when the circumstances call for it and generally just being a team player. Oftentimes when we see successful people act out, spin out, burn out publicly, they are at best disruptive, at worst abusive, and almost always self-destructive. They aren't coping well with the amount of success that's come to them. Now without being too general or presumptuous, those aren't really signs of being happy or content or humble about where they are. And to pine for the rock star lifestyle is oftentimes to ignore the poor rock star mental health that comes with it. You do not have to be a pushover in any respect. You can be assertive and nice. You can be spontaneous and nice. You can be respected by your peers and nice. As you keep working to improve your visual communication skills through art, make sure you don't neglect your human communication skills too. Should we do it one more time? Let's do it one more time. Making good art is never an excuse for being a bad person. So hey, the same way that some Mushroom Kingdom car salesman must have gotten Bowser Jr. into that clown car at some point, What's it gonna take for me to get you into one of these super nice bros prints on, on your wall? That's, that's a weird analogy. It makes a great gift for your Smash Bros or Nintendo loving friend, or a great gift for yourself, from yourself, cause you're super nice. So if you'd like 10% off of the print, all you have to do is one of these two things, be an email newsletter subscriber, which there's a link to in the description, or be a patron at any level. If you'd like the print at 50% off, all you have to be is a Cosmic Wanderer tier patron, either currently or any time in the past. So if you were one and canceled, you're still getting a message from me. If you'd like to print free, that's completely free, 100% off, all you have to do is be a Lamb of Liberation tier patron, either currently or any time in the past. So Cosmic Wanderer and Lamb of Liberation tier patrons, check your Patreon messages because I probably sent you one. So the print is free on top of all the other stuff you already get as a patron at that tier, the commission, the downloadable art files, the personalized video critique. So if any of that stuff sounds interesting to you, you want to print, head to the first link in the description below. If this video helped you, please give it a like and share it with a friend if you think it could help them too. I guess a friend who you think is a real jerk. Subscribing on YouTube lets you know when new videos every week here on Character Design Forge are made available. My Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and Twitch are all Bagel Denizen, and you'll see them in a few seconds. Thank you so much for watching, and be kind creating. Please rewind.